side. <laughs> you folks all ready? Get Jack's attention here. Good afternoon, everybody. If uh, uh, my, my name is Gary Douglas, President and CEO of the Plattsburgh North Country Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are also home of the Champlain Hudson Trade Quarter Coalition. Uh, speaking on behalf of approximately 300 chambers of commerce, economic developers, trucking companies, customs brokers, government agencies, and others who have an interest in and are concerned with the smooth and efficient operations of this port and of the facilitation of commerce up and down this region from Albany to Montreal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a crisis on our hands. And the peculiar thing is, uh, that hopefully we'll start addressing today, is that if we were to go out and ask most people in the North Country, geez, identify what the number one crisis is in the economy of this region, uh, I doubt that uh, very many uh, would before today have identified it as the facilities here at the Port of Champlain. Uh, but we're here to tell you today that we do have a crisis, a potentially growing crisis on our hands. The good news is that it's a crisis that's happening because good things are happening. Uh, econ the economy is booming, commerce is booming up and down this corridor. Uh, truck traffic is, uh, is increasing by 23% a year between Canada and the U.S. It's projected that it may well double within the next five years. That means more business, that means more jobs, that means more economic opportunity in the North Country, in the Champlain area, the Plattsburgh area, New York, and Quebec. Uh, it's both a north-south phenomenon. Uh, the bad news is we aren't ready for it yet, and we've got a lot to do to get ready for it. Uh, this facility uh, is not, uh, wasn't designed to handle that level of traffic, that level of truck traffic in particular. It was designed in 1967 when mostly what we were talking about were tourists and shoppers and people going to Expo 67. Uh, today this corridor is about commerce, about trucks, about the movement of goods, about the movement of personnel to companies. Uh, the facilities really were designed for another time. They need to be upgraded to be designed for the future. Uh, this, gate, this facility is the gateway for commerce in the North Country. It is the reason why this area is number one in the growth of manufacturing. Uh, most of that manufacturing is Canadian driven. They're here because it's close. They're here because it's easy to work in the Plattsburgh Gateway area. If this facility breaks down, as it will, if we don't start doing the right things, it's going to become our choke point. We can't afford to allow it to become our choke point. We need to make sure that it stays our gateway. Uh, we are very, very fortunate here in the North Country uh, to have a congressman who understands that, uh, who knows, because I, I don't think there are probably very many of his colleagues who have as much of a border with Canada as his district does. Uh, it is an enormous district that covers the entire northern New York area, uh, therefore has a number of border crossings, this being foremost among them in terms of the amount of commerce going through here. So our Congressman John McHugh understands why border crossings are important. He understands that they need to work efficiently if we're going to have uh, an effective growing economy here in northern New York. Uh, and we're therefore extremely pleased that he's, uh, he's put his shoulder to the cause of making sure that we prepare these facilities for tomorrow that we stop having situations like we now have here on almost a nightly basis where Route 15 north of this facility isn't so much a highway as it is a parking lot for trucks. Uh, I challenge any of you to return here if you haven't uh, done so in a long time. Go to Montreal, enjoy it on a Sunday afternoon, and then return home on a Sunday evening. And you'll see what the problem is. The trucks are backing up farther and farther up 15. That is a bottleneck for commerce. It's a bottleneck for economic development. Uh, thanks to our congressman, we had here today officials from U.S. Customs, from Immigration and Naturalization Service, and from the General Services Administration. We just spent the last couple of hours identifying the problems, coming to agreement and consensus on the need for action, on the need to expedite action as much as possible. Uh, we have uh, uh, some deadlines that we're going to shoot for to start uh, accelerating improvements here at the facility. And without saying anything more, I'm going to call on our congressman to tell you more about what we accomplished uh, today, what we're going to do from this point on today. And uh, my great pleasure to introduce Congressman McHugh and to thank him again for being here for us today. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, Gary. Well, thank you all for being here. Gary used the good news, bad news theme and let me continue in that vein. Uh, the good news is that here in Clinton County in the Plattsburgh, greater Plattsburgh region, uh, we're adjacent to uh, this great Canadian border and lie along the major thoroughfare between 
one of the population centers of Canada and of course the various population centers of the United States. Now the bad news is is that we lie along this border that here is the place by which our nation's immigration and custom laws are enforced that here is one of the major points by which uh, we rely upon the good folks here at this crossing uh, to ensure that our borders are safe to ensure that the kind of commerce and individuals who are transporting themselves and others across are in compliance with those laws. Gary mentioned and he's absolutely right this facility was built in a different era built when the demands were far different than they are now uh, fortunately for all of us who live in this region who enjoy the, the many wonderful things that it provides the commerce associated with that transborder traffic since the time that this is built has grown enormously Gary mentioned the statistics about new job creation about industrial and economic growth and expansion and capacity but that has put an enormous pressure uh, on this facility uh, we thought it was time to begin what was described this morning as a more active role in advocacy a time when we needed to come together certainly those of us at the federal level and begin to support the great work that Gary Douglas and the chamber and of course the county legislature the folks from the city of Plattsburgh and I want to add to Chris Ortloff and Ron Stafford our state legislators who are working so hard through the Department of Transportation in Albany and with the governor to try to formulate an approach that can alleviate the problems that we're experiencing here. The folks at GSA and particularly Customs and INS have enormous challenges throughout this country. Their problem is not a lack of concern about Champlain. Their problem are, is simply the demand on their resources that are, are so pressing in so many other places. So we wanted to get together with them today to try to find out what steps we could take in the short term. Steps like signage, steps such as ensuring that traffic patterns through here can be alleviated in, in, in minor but I think very important ways. What we could do in partnership over the mid and long term to begin to identify what we can do here. There are things that the Congress can and I think must do in terms of paying attention to the facility needs, in terms of paying attention to the numbers of personnel provided here. But in order to address that, we must first identify the priorities and what is important. So today was a beginning in a new partnership. The opportunity for the first time that certainly I can recall when local, commercial and government interests and representatives sat down with those of us from the federal government and the state government and, and talked about how we could work together uh, to make this really a model. What we can do together to help the hardworking employees here who are faced with the challenges of processing the traffic that flows in here fortunately day and night. So this was a very, very important step, but it was only a first step. Let's call it a work in progress. Uh, the folks here from State Department of Transportation and the GSA and INS and Customs have scheduled a meeting next week to take the next step in participating to develop a way by which the state could apply for federal funding for some sort of project improvement here. And in the uh, days and weeks and months ahead, we're going to try to prioritize the kinds of facility developments and other program enhancements that would be appropriate here so we can continue uh, to make this a model for the entire country in terms of customer friendly, fast and efficient, most technologically advanced uh, crossing that uh, we have here in the United States. So I personally want to thank the folks uh, from Customs and INS and GSA who traveled here from as far away as Washington DC and from Indiana giving up uh, the beginning of a holiday weekend uh, to show that they're concerned and they're willing to join us in this cooperative uh, cooperative agreement so uh, good news and hopefully more news to follow any, any, any questions? questions? <laughs> what kind of things are you looking at? Are you talking? 
kind of what happened at Highgate, that kind of idea? Or, uh... Well, ideally, although every, every part is unique, uh, the land situation is unique, the traffic, the highway connections, so it, you know, it, I don't think you can point to something and say, gee, that's the cookie cutter. Uh, but you only have to look behind us and, and realize with the, with the volume of truck traffic that's going through here, you, know, you can see the couple of lanes and the way they interact up above here. I mean, even at this time of day, you can see already what's happening here. Uh, and, and this is not a busy time of day. Um, there, there's, uh, there, there's discussion in the interim uh, of, uh, of making some changes in this area uh, that will at least make things flow through here better. Uh, and there's certainly, I uh, believe, and we talked about several of them, uh, there are some, some short-term fixes that are needed here because the problem is already here. Uh, but then there is a longer-term, more comprehensive preparation that needs to take place that certainly is, is, uh, is going to involve some much more substantial changes to this facility, maybe replacing the whole facility, or maybe substantially adding the facility in some ways. What, uh, what was stressed here today and what there was agreement on all the way around the table is that we didn't sit there at the table today and get out a piece of paper and pretend we were architects and design a facility. But everybody agreed there's urgency and that uh, there's going to be uh, uh, some follow-up meetings that have already been agreed to to get to that point and accelerate so that we, we, we were talking today that as early as 2004, uh, we, uh, we could uh, be looking at uh, hopefully some significant construction taking place here on an ultimate solution. And beyond just solving problems, uh, the vision that I, that, uh, that, uh, I know we're challenging everybody uh, to take on and that I think everybody seems prepared to take on is to make this the port of excellence on the entire Canada-U.S. border. Not just something that works adequately, but something that makes this uh, really a model, an example, something that will out Highgate, Highgate. Is your focus going to be on the truck end of the thing? You're going to go with the cars too? Gonna... Well, the fact, the fact is the two go together. Uh, the, uh, the passenger traffic here, if it wasn't for the trucks, you know, actually, actually doesn't work too badly. Uh, but if you don't fix the truck traffic, it's interfering with the passenger traffic. So, so really fixing one helps to fix the other. So it isn't either or, it really is both. Terry, it sounds like gridlock is eminent here. Gridlock has already been occurring here. There, was, uh, uh, there has been described to us a situation as recently as a few weeks ago where because of the way the whole situation works here on both sides of the border and the heavy amount of truck traffic and the inadequate facilities to handle them, things did gridlock at one point. Uh, there were trucks uh, uh, trying to cross over from one direction on the northern side of the border, preventing traffic from getting out of the Canadian side going north, and everything did freeze up. Uh, the thing is, if we don't start addressing that, that's going to become the norm, and not just an exceptional situation. Is Senator Schumer involved? Uh, yes, when we, uh, when we had Senator Schumer up here in June, uh, and the, the chamber had an extensive briefing with him, I can tell you that half the time we spent with him that day was talking about this facility. Uh, we didn't have time in that day scheduled to bring him up here, but uh, he is aware, he is interested, uh, we are in touch with his staff. Uh, I know both of us uh, will be briefing he and Senator Moynihan's office about the results of today's meeting, and uh, uh, we absolutely anticipate them being involved and engaged and helpful as well. They, they are equally interested in what's happening here. Well, we don't know what it would cost because we, we've yet to determine what needs to be done. Uh, that is why it was important today to get all the interests together. Uh, for those of us such as myself who don't deal in these kinds of operations on a day-by-day -day basis, it's not just a matter of constructing a facility or some sort of building and processing for customs and then doing something separate for immigration. In fact, they play off of each other. so. Uh, what we need to do is first assess what the most important needs there are, here are. We've asked the agencies to try to pull together and prioritize what the worst or the largest challenges are and then uh, go down the list from there, but also to provide us with some sort of master plan, for lack of a better uh, description, so that we can begin to uh, uh, look for funding sources. There are regular funding for sources that are available to various transportation assistance bills, T21. Uh, as well, there are some uh, border enhancement and improvement program monies that are available uh, through state governments as they apply to the federal government. That is the subject matter of a meeting next week between Bruce Irwin, the State Department of Transportation Regional Director, and folks from Customs, INS, and GSA to get together, try to enhance that application. And frankly, uh, 
In addition to that, there are opportunities uh, in the congressional uh, process to find what we call earmarks, uh, certain uh, often smaller kinds of improvement programs. But before we pursue those, we have to find out what is most needed, what the costs are, and uh, how they all fit together. And that's why today was the first step in that. What do you consider the most important thing? Is it you need more people, you need more space, you need better computers? You need yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all of those. But I guess if, uh, if speaking for just, just for myself, but I think, I think the consensus is the most important thing is to somehow uh, alter these facilities so we can get the trucks in off of Route 15 and handle them more efficiently. And, and that, thus also free up for the passenger traffic, the car traffic, to move on through without being interfered with. Now, there, there, are, a couple of, there are a couple of clear concepts for how to do that. One is a, is a short-term fix in here that will help alleviate it a little bit. Uh, some additional parking down in that compound, which, which actually uh, there, there, there's going to be something done in the next year uh, that will help a little bit. Uh, but then there is a, a broader concept here to take to possibly take 12 acres of land that uh, the federal government already owns adjacent to this facility and perhaps put a truck compound in there so the trucks can get in, go in there, perhaps interact with their customs brokers at that point, perhaps do some of the things they need to get ready to move on through uh, and then come through, a staging area if you will. Uh, there are some other possibilities for where or how that staging area might be done. But I, I would suggest that that kind of staging area for the trucks is almost inevitably going to be some part of the eventual plan. Uh, but then there are other things that are needed here. We need to separate the motor coach traffic from the trucks and deal with that. Um, this, again, if you, if you look around this facility and, uh, and picture it in your mind, I think you can even see when you go inside, it's designed like a tourism reception facility. Uh, it really was designed for another age. And so really your answer on all those things, we need technology, we need personnel, we need expanded facilities, we need a truck compound, we need signage improvements, we need to work with our friends in Quebec to do some things with signage and improvements north of the border, and we do have those conversations underway. Uh, they're coming to Plattsburgh on Wednesday. We're going to be talking with the Quebec Transport Ministry about some, some ways that we can get them to help us because this is in their interest. A lot of this commerce coming south are their truck companies and their companies selling products in the U.S. So the, the functioning of this U.S. port facility is, is as important to Canada and Quebec as it is to New York and the U.S. Do you have any kind of figures on how much business this represents between trucks and cars? <laughs> we still have. As of 1996, the impact of our, our neighbors, our immediate neighbors in Canada, on just Clinton County alone, $1.27 billion U.S. every year, 1996. So. Yes, it's about, uh, it, it's about the trucks and what's on the trucks. That amounts to $1 billion a day between the U.S. and Canada and growing 23% a year. But we've established it also is about industrial investment. We have 130 Canadian companies just in Plattsburgh and Champlain now. They've got to move their personnel and their goods easily through this port. Uh, this is the gateway for all of the North countries. I would suggest all of the North countries most exciting economic aspirations and opportunities. We can't allow for it to become the choke point. I know you said uh, the business is on the increase. Are you concerned that some of the business is going to start dropping off because of how this situation is here now? Absolutely. You, I mean, is that already happening? Or yes. Are you trying to get it before now? Yes, that absolutely is happening. There are Canadian trucking companies that are ha already making decisions now to avoid this port. Um, that, that isn't going to increase that, that, that upward trend but it means that we are missing opportunities. And if this port begins to be seen by our Canadian friends as not a port that's easy to get their goods and, and materials in and through, not an easy port to get their personnel in and through, then maybe that decision they're thinking about expanding that place in Plattsburgh or deciding whether to put that new facility at the Champlain Industrial Park, maybe we might want to sit back and wait about that. The good news is I think we're well on track today to addressing it in enough time that we can avoid it becoming an absolute crisis. We have a crisis on our doorstep, but we're recognizing it and we're taking action to address it for those very reasons. Because if we don't, five years from now, those faucets are going to start turning off. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. I'd like to thank Gary Douglas for pulling this together today. He has done so much for this area and has recognized this problem. No one else had pulled it together before, so 
thank you very much, Gary, for doing this for us and um, contacting Congressman McHugh. And he, in turn, I want to thank him for bringing all these folks from Washington. I do appreciate that as the uh, representative from this area. I also live here in Champlain. I, I know how important this is. Um, many of my constituents are employed here. Many work here in various capacities. And this is a very, very important facility to us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Celine. Uh, uh, Celine uh, Parquette is the Clinton County Legislator for the Champlain area and sat in on our uh, meeting today. And uh, uh, it really was important to have all those folks around the table because if you had met with any one group of them, you wouldn't quite have gotten the whole picture, would we? Absolutely. It was great to hear all the little pieces. Everybody's working on, on a piece of it. But uh, I, I hope and I think they will start next week putting it all together. You know, somebody's got $100,000 there, somebody realizes trucks need a staging area, somebody realizes something else, but uh, I was very impressed with uh, the interest that was shown today. Uh, but I can tell you, and I can't stress this enough, it takes a congressman to do that. I worked, I worked for one for 14 years, uh, and I know it takes a congressman to, uh, uh, to, uh, to bring attention to something like this, to, to, uh, to get folks like, uh, like a, a deputy commissioner of U.S. Customs uh, to come here and, and visit Champlain and the other uh, agency people. They came here uh, from Washington, New York, Syracuse, Indianapolis, uh, from all over to be here with the congressman because, uh, because his invite made it serious. So we're very, very fortunate uh, that we have that kind of support. And uh, as I uh, uh, mentioned in the press conference, uh, we have that kind of support as well from Senator Schumer. Uh, we spent a great deal of time talking with him. Uh, he, he, of course, wasn't able to be with us here today. He's, he's aware of this event here today. We'll be briefing him. Uh, he's ready to put his shoulder to the stone on appropriations and things that we need. We met with Senator Moynihan in Washington last month. He's aware. He's ready to help. Uh, two weeks ago in Albany at a conference, we met uh, with uh, Congressman John Sweeney uh, and Congressman Mike McNulty from the Albany area, uh, both of whom represent other parts of this trade corridor, and, and they realized that the trucking companies and businesses down through the Glens Falls and Saratoga and Albany region are also directly affected by the functioning of this border, and they've promised to help. Uh, and now we've, uh, uh, coming up this Wednesday, we're going to get the Quebec people to help us. So that's the kind of coalition that we need for the North Country to punch above its weight is that we have to bring in the outsiders and uh, get them uh, all in our cause, too. Uh, any final thoughts, Celine? No. Now you see why I'm calling Gary our advocate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very important that we have someone like Gary to remind us of uh, everything that can be done, and he's willing to pull it together, which is, which is tremendous, and, and I thank him for it. Well. It's, it's the chamber, and the chamber's going to stay on this. Uh, we said in a, in a, uh, a letter to the, the editor in the press, Re Republican, this morning, we intend to take no prisoners. And that's exactly, we mean it. We're going to take no prisoners until we come back here, I mean, hopefully on a warmer day, but we come back here and cut a ribbon on a new and improved port facility at Champlain. That's going to be a great day to celebrate for the North Country because it's going to guarantee for the next century that this port will continue to be an engine for economic progress for all of northern New York. Uh, with that, thank you for watching North Country Commerce, and uh, as always, uh, be sure to stay in touch with the Chamber if you want to know more about this effort or any other efforts we're involved in, 563-1000, we'd love to hear from you.